Hello everyone. So today we are going to start a new video and this video regarding um, how you can run regression using Stata. So um, this is in continuation of our all other video regarding Stata where we have already completed a very basic analysis using Stata and then we have completed correlation also and pairwise correlation with uh, multiple variables. We have seen how to calculate the statistical significance of the variable. So today we are going to discuss regarding regression analysis using Stata. So before we start, we are going to install the system data in our computer. So the command is as before, this use auto dot dta. So now this is our system data, which is available in Stata. So now we are considering our y variable, that is the dependent variable as price. So, and uh, we would run the regression with different parameters like weight, length, gear, and mileage per gallon, and the manufacturer of the car, that is whether it's a domestic car or foreign car. So what variables we are going to use um, uh, as Y variable, that is price. But before we run the regression, we should know what would be the command to run the regression. So to run the regression, the command that we use is regress. So regress, it stands for regression. So we use the command regress. This is, you need to remember, it's going to run uh, ordinary list square. So whether it's uh, simple or multiple doesn't matter. So you have to use the command regress. So regress the dependent variable first. Then after regress, you should write your dependent variable that is y variable here. In this particular situation, we are considering price as our dependent variable. That means price of a car and what are the determinants of it. So we are considering price as the dependent variable and our independent variable R. The first variable is weight. So you can directly click here and it would come here or you could write of your own. The second variable is length and then space. The third variable we are using gear. So gear ratio is our third variable. And the fourth variable is mileage per gallon. Say, uh, suppose this is my fourth variable, mileage per gallon. And then our last variable is foreign. So this foreign is a binary variable. That means it has two different types, either zero or one. Zero stands for domestic and one stands for foreign car. So let's um, see first with tablet command, what foreign variable actually shows us. It has two observation, domestic and foreign. As we have already discussed in our previous video, that to understand whether this variable that is coded as or labeled as domestic and foreign, how we can see what actually the variable values are. So how we can do that? So we are writing tab foreign then no lab. That means we don't want any labeling of this variable. So, um, oh, sorry, there is a space I had given. So this is after no lab, we could see zero, car type zero, zero stands for domestic car, which has 52 observations, foreign car, which is coded as one, it has 22 observations. Now we are going to use this particular uh, variable in our regression. So like before we have written regress, price, weight, length, gear ratio, mileage per gallon. If we consider all the variables, if you just get uh, take the tabulations of weight, length, price, gear ratio, mileage per gallon, all these variables are continuous in nature. 
that if we look at the foreign variable, it's not continuous, it's a categorical, specifically it's a binary data. So what we could do, we can write I dot foreign. So if you write I dot foreign, it would give you separately the value for the second variable that is um, compared to the domestic car, what's the difference in prices for the foreign car? So you would get the value. So let's see after running the regression, if you run this, you could get the these particular results. So now if you could uh, read the result, you could see that the all the variables are given like weight, how it is related with your dependent variable price. There is positive relationship with length. It is negatively rela related. With gear ratio, it is negatively related. With mileage per gallon, it is negatively related. In case of foreign variable, you could see it's written one dot. One dot in the sense that it's giving the value for one. That means if you actually move from domestic car to foreign car, your price would increase by 382.279 unit. So now if you if you look at the T statistics, you could see that your first variable that is weight is significant at the five uh, at 99% uh, level. The second variable that is length is significant at 5% level. If you look at the uh, gear ratio, it's not significant. If you look at the mileage per gallon, it is not significant, but foreign variable that is statistically significant at 99% level. And the constant term is given at the end of the result, and it is also not significant. Now, uh, sometimes it could be very difficult for many of you to understand whether from these T statistics, how you can actually um, uh, know about the statistical significance. So another way is you could see this data also gives us the p-value. So p-value actually uh, help you to calculate the statistical significance of each of the variable. How you can get it? So if you multiply the p-values with uh, 100, that then you would get the statistical significance for each of the observations. So like weight, the value is 0 0.000. So if you multiply it with 100, it would become 000. .0. That means it is less than a value of 1. So in that case, you could say the, the value or the particular variable is statistically significant at 1% or 99% level. On the other hand, if you look at the next variable length, the p-value is given as 0 0.012. So if you multiply this with 100, it would become 1.2. That means it is a value which is greater than 1 but less than 5. So that is why it is statistically significant at 5% or 95% level. And uh, similarly, you can check with other variables. Now, the most interesting part, if you see here, we are getting the values of different uh, parameters like number of observations, then the F statistics, then you could say um, R square value, adjusted R square value, and root mean square error. So now I'm going to discuss about the R square value. So if you see the R square value is 0 0.55. So that means it's not a very strong uh, model uh, with us. So now why is it so? Um, we can inspect the result with some technique here. So all of you know that uh, in case of ordinary square method, we always use uh, one particular assumption about the error term, that is the um, stochastic term in our model, that it is normally distributed. So in that case, it has to be normally distributed. If it has to be normally distributed, your y variable should also be normally distributed. So let's see whether our price variable is normally distributed or not. So to check this, now we have a beautiful command here, and this command known as G ladder. G ladder, G L A D D E R, G ladder, and then the variable if you write that is my variable is price here. So if you enter, you could see uh, it would take some time that you would get a particular window with uh, beautiful graphs. So 
just wait for a few minutes now we have got the result so i'm just increasing the visibility of it so you could see um there are different transformations these are called the transformations of the data that means if you take the cubic value of price it its distribution would look like this if you take the square value of it it would look like this if you take the identity that means as it is it is presently distributed in this form if you take the square root it would be like this if you take log it would be like this if you take one by square root it would be like this if you take the inverse it would be more or less look like normally distributed if you take one by square root it would be something like this and one by cubic root it would be like this. Like here, it would be like this but for this particular um, example we are taking very easy one that is we are taking the log transformation yeah so um, yeah, but of course our choice depends on this particular type of distribution here it is suggested an inverse or log so we are taking log here um so the command is here so suppose we are creating a new variable generate that is we are writing gen here we are creating a variable called x which is equals to log of price variable now after this we are put we are this this would actually create a new variable x which would be the log of the variable price now we have created a new variable x you could see in our variable window we have new variable x now we would run the same regression with same regression with new variable x and we would see what changes we could observe in our result so now if we enter you could see um more or less the statistical significance have changed a bit but what is very very important in this case you could see in our previous results the r square was 0.55 that is 55 percent it has increased to 57 percent here so in this way we could increase the um, um reliability or actually the value of r square in our model of our model so and i have already discussed how to analyze the results of your regression so hope you have benefited with this video if you have benefited please subscribe our channel and to get more such video please um, you can press the bell icon thank you so much